This is the Big O Show. This is the Big O Show. All right, all right. There he is about the jet set. Where, where are you going? Going to the golf course, man. Uh, first round in a few months, man. It's uh, almost started my off season, so I'm going to start it off with some golf. Okay. All right. Where are you going? What golf course? Uh, just Co- Cooper, just a Cooper Colony. It's a neighborhood course up not too far. Just going to hit a few balls around. Okay. All right. Uh, your thoughts on uh, the Vic Fangio uh, divorce with the Miami Dolphins. And some fans are wondering why no trade instead but i think it was kind of one of those things that everybody wanted to kind of part ways but you tell me what you know well first of all i don't i don't believe that you can trade coordinators i think that's just a head coach thing um okay i don't think there's been any examples of that i may be wrong but i don't think there's a pipeline of trading coordinators um, you know you know now that i think about it you're right i'm trying to remember i don't remember an assistant coach ever getting traded or coordinator you're right yeah yeah, so I would have to look deep into the rules so that it'd be even allowed, but I think that's largely yeah. a head coach thing. I don't even think you can trade general managers, honestly. I think it's just a head coach and player thing. Um, wow, you know, now that I think about it, yeah, there's been no personnel director or general manager ever yeah. traded. All- yeah, dude, you're right. It's only been head coaches. Yeah, so I think that's just a head coach thing, although I'm sure people want – uh, you know, as much assets as they can, given the offseason the Dolphins have ahead. Um, as far as the move, I would say I was a little surprised. I did not think that Mangio was going going somewhere. Now, it once I think it's become clear publicly what some of the reasons are, that part does not surprise me. I've heard some of those same things uh, throughout the year. I just don't think it's necessarily my, uh, my standing to, to lay out players' grievances, because players always have grievances. Um, but yeah, I think this was just a situation of the fit was not maybe um, exactly what they thought. I think Mike McDaniel probably knew that Vic Mangio was a, a, a rougher personality, could be stubborn at times. But when you face it full head every day in the building, I think it's uh, a little different. And so, you know, coaches felt that Mike McDaniel felt that, um, you know, players felt that. And I think for Vic, it was always a situation where he wanted to be the Eagles defensive coordinator last yeah. offseason. And they had a little tampering situation with Jonathan Gannon, who was their defensive coordinator going to Arizona, that really held up the situation. And I think Vic was kind of stuck with, do I take the bird in the hand that's going to pay me, uh, you know, four or five million dollars a year? Or do I wait and see if this Philly thing comes to fruition? And he took the Miami job. And so he gets an opportunity to go home closer to his family. Um, and I don't think there's a lot of tears being shed in that, uh, that Dolphins locker room. Yeah, no, I, I think it was obviously he didn't want to be here. So you, you move on and, and, and part ways with him. Uh, I think that made a lot of sense. But obviously there must have been a bad fit on the other end of it. And who knows, man? Maybe the coach in the front office thought, no, you got to find a way to get Cam Smith on the field. And, you know, little things like that may have may have rubbed them the wrong way, uh, not adjusting and and uh, and using Jalen Ramsey to shadow somebody or something like that, or blitzing, or even when you played the Ravens, you didn't blitz Lamar more, which that proved to be very successful the last two years against him. You know, which I, I'm by the way, I'm actually shocked that more people did not see that blueprint that Miami used the last two years and use it actually against him. Uh, so, yeah, there, there were different things that I could imagine from their side, they were questioning Vic, too. Yeah, and I would say, like, like just to keep this balanced, because that's kind of the way I go journalism-wise, I would say if you ask Vic, and he was honest with you, which he tends to be, he would probably say that he didn't feel like he got the full all-in back either. I think that he was probably given a roster that was largely not his guys. Right. A draft that was largely not his guys. And he had to adjust with it. And so there probably could have been a little bit more on both sides, the Dolphins and Vic Bangio's side, to go all in on this sort of marriage. And as a result, they kind of were looking at each other with side eyes all year uh, and trying to make it work. And to their credit, I mean, it was a 10th ranked defense at the end of the year, um, although towards the end, you know, injuries started to become a huge issue so the scheme and the actual production i think was less of an issue than like personalities relationships and, and ultimately what people wanted out of this uh this marriage 
Uh, Devin Jordan is uh, sending in a super chat. He's got a question. Uh, he says, Big O and Cam, do you think there was a there was tampering from the Eagles? Um, there's tampering everywhere. You know what I mean? So that's it. And you know the agent, the agent for Vic Fangio could easily be talking to the Eagles, and none of us would know or anything like that. So that kind of stuff, unless you have the hard evidence to it, I'm sure there was tampering because I'm sure everybody tampers. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. T- tamper is like holding. You can call it on every play, right? Um, I would also say this. Like, I don't know how many people care about the how the sauce is being made part of it. Vic Bangio also shares an agent with Mike McDaniel. And so they both have the same agent. Right. Because of that, I think that it's probably unlikely that the Dolphins essentially challenge Vic Bangio and Mike McDaniel's agent for tampering. Uh, I don't know if Mike would love that. Right. And so I just think there's a lot of stuff that behind the scenes that's not even going to be, uh, in my opinion, something that they pursue. Um, now, yeah, Vic Bangio probably agreed to a deal within 24 hours of being lost. I do think there's, it's hard to believe there was no idea that he would get that job. I'm sure there was an educated belief that, hey, if, if this mutual party happens, we can make this happen. Now, but that's not something you can necessarily prove in tampering, per se. Right, um, of course. Yeah, and I, I, I told you, the connection there was obvious. It's not like it was a shock. He was talking to the Eagles last offseason. He was a consultant with the Eagles last year. And so this these are already he was already in the building. He was already having relationships with these folks. It didn't work out timing wise. And then when the Miami situation looked like it was a little rocky, I think it was a perfect kind of parachute for Vic Bangio. All right. Uh, who gets it? Hill or Campanelli? Or do they go outside? I personally think they go inside because Mike McDaniel needs to have a little good PR inside his staff. And, and uh, promoting from within, I think, is I think is the kind of PR he needs at this moment in time and continuity. So I think they'll stay inside and in-house, not go outside like Brandon Staley or some other names that people have talked about. You tell me what you know. Yeah, um, I think we're early in the process. I would tell you this, not tweeted about this. I think Anthony Cabanelli um, would be a, a great option for the defense coordinator spot. I've talked to two or three players who vouch for Campanelli and said that's the guy that they want. Um, I know there's coaches on the staff who want Campanelli as the guy. And so, to me, that would make sense as the internal option. Obviously, you have Renato Hill, uh, who's a pass game coordinator, is another option. Um, but I do think they'll bring candidates in externally to interview. Um, Brandon Staley, obviously, has been a name button around, and I think he will get an interview. Um, he's another guy who has the same agent as Mike McDaniel. And so there's a shared connection there. He comes from the Vic Bangio tree. So he would run a same scheme or similar scheme. And so you wouldn't have to teach your defense another scheme all over again, but then he would have to answer the questions. And I'm sure the fan base wouldn't love the fact that his defense has been bad with the chargers for the last three years when he was a head coach. And so um, I think there would certainly be some concerns from that respect, but he's a guy that makes sense. Uh, Jiro Aviro, who's the uh, defensive coordinator for the Panthers. Um, he's currently under contract, and the Panthers haven't let him interview for jobs so far. Uh, but I do know Mike McDaniel has a lot of respect for him. I'd imagine he would. All right, Cam, let's see if you stop screwing with your mic and you can uh, <laughs> finish your uh, your statement there. Yeah, do you got me here? You can hear we me. We got you. We right. got you. Yeah, no, I was saying before, uh, Ajiro Aviro, Brandon Staley, those are a couple internal options that make sense for me. Uh, Vero's under contract with the Panthers. They haven't let him interview anywhere. Um, so he may not be able to get out, but I know Mike McDaniel and a lot of the league has a lot of respect for him um, if they don't go with the internal option. Okay. But what, what's your gut tell you? Because I kind of think they the, to the continuity purposes too, they might go internal. Well, I think that – I think Mike really does like the Vangio style defense. Maybe just not the the, the Vangio style personality may not have gelled with everybody, but the right. Vangio style defense. And so um, I think that he'll give every look to the, somebody that runs the Vangio style defense. Um, but I think if he made a poll, and I'm sure they told him in exit interviews, because I know they had exit interviews with players uh, last week. If he made a poll of that defense locker room, I'd, I'd be pretty sure that the uh, the favorite vote would be Anthony Campanella. Yeah, well, I mean, uh, 
Uh, that'll be good. There'll be a lot of cussing, which is uh, always fun to hear. So uh, nothing wrong with that. Um, we look at Mike McDaniel. Have you? Uh, one of the things I got from the building was he uh, he's taking this stuff really personal. You know, a lot of the shortcomings and the failures and all that. Um, I don't know what you're hearing, but if you needed to suggest something that Mike McDaniel needs to change next year, what is it? Um, I mean, I struggle with that because, like, he's a lot better at his job than I am at his job. Um, so I'm sure he knows. I think some things from, like, a game plan perspective that stood out to me is, like, in, in game adjustments, right? Like that's something we've talked about. I think that's something that I would probably say would be a focus point. Um, how to get your offense to travel with you on the road, uh, how to get those motions and and the, the elements that didn't necessarily work on the road to work on the road with silent counts. I think those are things the whole offense work on. Um, I don't know if that's a Mike McDaniel scheme stuff as much as like Tua has to figure out with the offensive line how to manage those elements. But those are probably the two elements that stand out to me the most. And then he's got to nail this defensive coordinator, right? Like this is the third defensive coordinator in three years. And so um, I think that's going to be important to have some level of stability at that spot and really the whole staff going for it. So we're blaming uh, Danny Crossman's assistant, but not Danny Crossman. <laughs> I don't know that all the moves are done yet, but yes, as, as I reported uh, yesterday or a couple days ago, whenever I put it out, uh, yeah, Bren, Brendan Farrell, the assistant special teams coach, not coming back. And then they got rid of uh, three offensive assistants who didn't have a room, but offensive assistants. Um, this week, I'm told they were supposed to go over the defensive coaches and then the Vic Fangio news happened. So I'm not sure how much that affects the decisions there because they're gonna bring in a new coordinator who obviously will have a opinion on this current staff. Uh, Kenny Baker, their assistant D-line coach, is going to Texas to become a D-line yeah. coach. So that's yeah. another move there. But, yeah, I'm not sure if the final decision's been made on Crossman, but he, as of when I talked to people a couple days ago, was still on staff. So, um, yeah. he's not. I, I, if he's still here now, I think he's safe, actually. I, I the, This last week was about players. This week was about coaches. If you've made your decision already, I think he – he survived. Why? I have no idea. I cannot figure out for the life of me how Danny Crossman is still employed with the Miami Dolphins. That one, that one is wow. That one is way of dude. I would have fired him way ahead of Josh Boyer. Way ahead of Josh Boyer. Okay. I I, I don't get that one at all, Cam. I really don't understand. All right. Last thing, the Tua contract, will it happen right here early in the offseason to create the space? Or they already ha they, they actually have a lot of other options to really create the space. If they really wanted to, they can do it other ways, as I've predicted already for a while. Wilkins is not coming back. So that's going to be a big, wide-open $20 million of space that's going to be there. So you tell me, does the Tua contract, because I'm convinced the Tua contract will happen. He will get the extension. I just don't know when in this process. Will it be early in the offseason or will it be something later in the June air in the June time? Yeah, I don't know if I expect it early in the offseason. I think it's a complex deal. I don't think it's something the Dolphins are forced to do for cap space purposes. Obviously, it would help, but I think they can make enough moves so that it's not feeling like their pressure is we have to get this done so that we can make moves. So you um, agree with me that Wilkins is gone? I think that if he's going to get the deal he wants, the Dolphins are going to have to raise their money up a lot, and Chris Greer does not seem to be that guy in the past. Okay, so you agree with me. He he, he go. He go. He ain't getting that money here. He's yeah. not getting that money here, bro. Not getting that money here. He's not. So, so you think it's like a June deal? I don't know what time. I can't promise you it could be tomorrow, but I, I do not think that it's uh, – if I had to guess based on what I know – I don't think this is a deal that's getting done before free agency. Post post June, post June, kind of uh, the X Men. He probably will be a post June cut. It's probably what will happen with him, right? I would I would hope and I would think be based on his time here, they wouldn't uh, drag him out like that, because the one thing with players with getting cut late in that situation is it sets them up for failure as far as free agency, and so 
uh, I would hope for a guy that's put in as much time as X that they would at least give him an idea early whether he's going to be on the roster or not. Really? So X didn't put them through any uh, hell the last seven, eight years? I, I, yeah, I mean, sure. Oh, okay. All right. Sure. Okay. But I'm just saying, okay. given given how business is done, I think that would be a little bit of a a, 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 a stab, you know, which, like I said, businesses do that, teams do that, and so nothing would shock me. I would just say for a homegrown guy that's, you know, probably one of the best cornerbacks you've ever had in franchise history. No doubt. I, I think that you, uh, you you try to at least get him – at least give him a heads up that he's going in March, um, if that's the case. Yeah, I, I the thing is you have to do cap-wise what's best for your team. And I think him as – unfortunately, unfor- it's a it's a post-June cut for him because cap-wise – You can, you can, des- you can designate age. people as a post-June cut uh, without it being in June. Okay. All right. I didn't know that. Really? Yeah. So then he can he can – he can negotiate a deal, but he won't be able to sign it till post June. You won't be able to access like the Dolphins you. wouldn't be able to access that money until after the date. But you can designate him that for cap purposes. Okay, and then he can negotiate a deal, at least to have for post June, right? Because technically, he won't be able to sign no, the deal. Would, you can you can release a player. Oh, in you, March. Okay, designate him as a post June cut. Let him move on, sign his own team. You just won't get the cap benefits until post June. Oh, okay. So that oh, then they'll do that for sure. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. That's that helps them and helps him. Right. Oh, yeah, right. Yeah, 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 yeah. The yeah. one thing is, teams yeah. sometimes do what you were suggesting if they're really trying to shaft a dude who's making a lot of money and they want to try to uh, try to bully him into a pay cut and right. say, "Hey, we're going to keep you into the roster until June or July." Right. And then they try to make you take a deep pay cut and say, hey, well, good luck on the market. And by that point, all the money's dried up. And so you're either forced to take the pay cut um, or get less on the market. And so that's what I was saying. I hope they don't just good drag nugget. him along in that respect just to try to get him to take a massive pay cut. No, no, that, that's uh, that's that's good info. No, I think they're moving on from him overall. I don't think uh, I don't think it's about a pay cut or anything like that. I think they're going to move on. Uh, unfortunately, I think, you know. Shit like that happens. All right, man. Hit them straight. Have a great weekend. We'll catch up on Tuesday, my friend. Thank you, sir. Sounds good. Appreciate you. You got it. There you go. KSDTCPA. My Emmett Dolphins report with the one and only Cameron Wolf. And, of course, call our friends at KSDTCPAs for your personal taxes, for your business taxes. And, and listen, man, whether it's tax, advisory, assurance, accounting, When it comes to business taxes, for those of you out there, you know it. You own the business. You know how it is. You need that guidance all throughout the year. And the great thing that KSDT does, and by the way, they're a top 200 firm by by Forbes uh, magazine and tax and and, uh, and accounting firms. So for both for both reasons, for accounting and for tax, they're top 200 in each by Forbes. So call the folks at KSDT CPAs. There's the number 305-670-3370. That's 305-670-3370. And also, if you're looking for work in Dade, Broward, or Palm Beach counties, they've got offices in Dade, in Broward, and in Palm Beach. So you're not going to have to drive to one county. If you live in Palm Beach, you might be able to work in the office in Palm Beach. And they opened up a new office in Charlotte, North Carolina, and they're also by the way, uh, hiring there in Charlotte, North Carolina. It seems like everybody's always is hiring. So make sure you uh, reach out to the great people at KSDT CPAs, 305-670-3370, or use that QR code that's there. That is your KSDT CPA, Miami Dolphins Report. 